start with the, <laughs> the normal, <laughs> the normal bit I do. And the, and the reason I do that, we actually, Sumia and I got some really good news this week, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say it yet. So I'm going to leave you on an August cocktail cliffhanger. Drink more, drink more, because it's so tense, you can't stand it. <laughs> and this month we're doing comedy of errors because if you saw my impromptu last week's post in the middle of the woods, it wasn't funny at the time, but <laughs> now I can laugh about it, thank goodness. However, in comedy of errors, sort of the opposite, it was hysterically funny to audiences at the time, hysterically funny. And now people are like, Hmm. <laughs> they're not sometimes they don't get the jokes like why are there two sets of twins and they both had the same name this is a mystery uh but anyway so our cocktail of the month from our historical drinkery master drew bolander is from the comedy of errors and he so fantastically puts up the the lines that go with the uh, with, with the ingredients in the cocktail because I was very strict in my parameters that it has to be, it has to be plants that are in the play. Now, one of the ingredients is sugar. And last week, last year, last week, <laughs> she has no time, no sense. I don't have a sense of time. So there is another Shakespeare cocktail book, but which they, I think is sort of impressionistic. We, Amazon lost it on us. Thank you very much, Amazon. And so um, we don't know what it says. Uh, but anyway, we're doing, Drew is doing a fantastic cocktail from the Comedy of Errors. However, those lines are not going to be our line of the week. And again, I can't stress this enough how this will help your memory. Now, there were two that I loved. One is every why hath a wherefore little puzzling because wherefore already means why ergo wherefore are thou romeo is why why are you called romeo but you could also say it's splitting hairs a little for what reason why for what reason which is a little bit of an extrapolation on the why right okay so but i didn't pick that uh i, I chose this will be a very good one for another time. So keep it in the back of your brain. See, look at all those synapses firing already. And now we're gonna tamp them down with too much drinking. <laughs> no, no, no. But this is perfectly in time for uh, Labor Day weekend as well. So the line of the week is, am I in earth, in heaven, or in hell? Am I in earth, in heaven, or in hell? And that's Every why hath a wherefore is one of the Dromeo twins, and this is one of the Antiphili or Antiphilus twins. Okay, so Drew, tell yeah. us about our cocktail today. All right, so this cocktail is called the Sweet Faced Youth, or Sweet, yeah, Sweet Faced Youth, Aww. which is uh, what uh, Dromeo says about himself when he sees his twin brother for the or realizes he's seeing his twin brother for the first time he Isn't says well, nice? i see by this that i'm a sweet-faced youth <laughs> and um <laughs> as if he's never seen a mirror before because of right. course in ancient greece maybe they didn't have one yeah right <laughs> so all the times so you can put on this yeah so Greece, this is a it's Greece a, surroundings, not actually Greece, just to be specific here. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. So this is actually a very easy cocktail to make to remember because it's called an equal parts cocktail, which means every ingredient you're having the same amount. Okay. So um so you have an equal parts of each little thing. And the, the parts that we have are maraschino, which is a cherry liqueur that is very popular and uh, is our one of our cherry inputs this is a very cherry forward drink cherry forward yeah a lot of and cherry then, yes the cherry mentioned do you remember the line offhand well it's, the it's like a weird list of there's a, a rush, list it's a, a reed a, nut, a cherry stone a nut a cherry yeah. stone the cherry so cherry stone is sort of my inspiration for this cocktail because i actually have cherry stones in this cocktail and we'll get to oh, that cool. um so here's our cherry input. And for nut, which is also in that list, we have Frangelico, which is hazelnut liqueur. And the nut is not specific right. um, in this line, but I went with hazelnut because it's so, it seems so ubiquitous in this time. It seems, it seems like that's 
Well, and also, I'm sure you read the book where I say mm -hmm. that often the nut referred to is the hazelnut right. because it's so, I don't know if I used the word for ubiquitous. I hope I did. I love that word. It's a good word. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to sneak in this one. Here's our one Shakespearean, but not comedy of errors ingredient, which is important to make these flavors go together, which is lemon juice. Okay. Okay. Um, so Lemon it's based... is in Shakespeare, though. It's in Love's Labor's Lost. Right. So, so the, the um, cocktail this is kind of based on is called The Last Word, which is lime juice, chartreuse, maraschino, and gin. Um, and so this is sort of a version of that that you can add. We, we've discovered that lemon and lime actually taste pretty similar in cocktails, despite the fact that purists will tell you otherwise. What it's really there is to be tart and to balance out these two sweet things. So we mm -hmm. get the flavors of this nut and this cherry without the saccharineness of two different liqueurs on top of each other. So it's yeah, like I was wondering balance. about that. I mean, is it terrifically sweet? No, because of the lemon and because of this baby, our last ingredient right here, which is a homemade ingredient. This is gin that I've infused with saffron, which is oh from another God. line of, of, and it smells wonderful. Um, Gin with saffron. I wonder if anybody else has done that. We'll have to look uh, into that. I imagine. Because we are going to be starting a historical drinkery as a pop-up. I don't know yeah. where, I don't know when, but we're doing it. I so. have not seen saffron gin marketed. I have seen people say, oh, I made this because I look up things and like, is this possible? And people are like, oh, mm -hmm. I did this. I did that on their home brewing kind of stuff. Anyway, I'll and get I to sent a long uh, disquisition to um, these people who were had been helping me uh, cultural. They, they do cultural things in London uh, where I think that gin is, in fact, in Shakespeare in in um, the Tempest, where Caliban says that Prospero gave him water with berries in it. And mm -hmm. gin was at that time a medicinal, a Ginevra made with juniper berries, right? Wow. Yeah. That's exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, oh, speak of the last thing is the actual cherry stone. So I have rimmed this glass, little coupe glass. You can use martini, whatever you have available um, with cherry that uh, in the Middle East, people use cherry stones from a sour cherry to flavor things. And so this is a spice that I found called Malab, which is M-A-H-L-A-B. Mm -hmm. And it is little stones. You can see the stones in there, little stones of a cherry. And it kind of smells like sweet almonds and a little bit like rose water, honestly. Does the, does the cherry stone have any permutation at all? I mean, how does a flavor get out of a hard pit? basically. Um, well, for it's they don't smell. I ground these up with a mortar and pestle and it sort of oh. releases the flavor. Mm -hmm. They've been sitting right now in the sun and they become more fragrant. So I also imagine if you roast this, like if you roast nuts, the flavor yeah. gets much more forward. Oh it depends on how, how, how much effort you want to put into your cocktail. Right. <laughs> So, All right, so, but they're not going to make you probably be able to make saffron gin. So, are you just suggesting regular gin? As a oh, it's very easy. I put this in 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 the recipe for this drink is also the recipe of the saffron gin. Take mm -hmm. about from fifteen to twenty saffron threads and about a cup of gin. And if you want to do a full bottle, you want to do like twenty plus. Okay. Sit it in there overnight. Mm -hmm. Remove the saffron threads, and then you'll get this. It's very easy this this beautiful overnight color. so Great. sweet dreams <laughs> yeah. about what your cocktail is going to be yeah in now, the morning we've talked about in the morning <laughs> yes it's an eye opener um uh we've talked about saffron honey and infusing honey with saffron on mm -hmm. the show but yeah i like the idea of saffron gin it's saffron crazy. was this crazy thing in the 16th century where everybody was it was highly prized there's saffron fields there's saffron walden there's a, a place near uh, in camden area of camden in london with all the streets named saffron because they were growing saffron all there because everybody wanted it for all kinds of things right yeah and if there's a saffron walden actually was called chipping walden before 
they started the saffron industry there, which is really cool. They renamed the whole town. What's interesting about saffron, because it's really expensive still, but it's not because it's as exotic. It's not as difficult to get because you can grow saffron in England. You can grow saffron anywhere. But what's right. difficult is it's very difficult to extract the pieces that you need. Little threads. That you get have to do it everything. by hand and, it, and each flower yields very little. So it's just a very labor intensive uh, plant to yes. harvest. So, so. I, I have a whole thing about saffron and hair color in, in the live talk, so I'm not giving it away here, but yes. And what was I, um, you can get it at Costco though. You can oh, actually easy. get saffron at Costco. Yeah, and Trader Joe's has it in pretty, pretty inexpensive, yeah. Great. Um, Trader Joe's is also where I got this gin. If you wanna be adulterating your gin like this, but you don't wanna to spend too much, they, they have uh, 10 to 20 bucks, these bottles of gin. Or at Trader Joe's. This okay. one's called Preeminence. They have another one that's called like Distillers Mark or something like that. Okay. So let's get to putting this baby together. So I'm going to start. You start <laughs> again. I said this before, but you start with your least expensive ingredient, which in mm -hmm. this case is lemon juice. Mm -hmm. And we're doing this equal parts. So this I'm doing uh, three three quarters of an ounce, which is about twenty two point five mils. Okay. Um, I don't know which one of these. Probably actually. It's hard to say what's less expensive now that I put saffron on this. I'll leave the saffron to last because it probably is too expensive, more expensive to make. Um, but I'll do the frangelico next. And it is smells that like- a bottle of monk? It's supposed to be a monk, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be like fra angelico. All oh, right, right. Yeah. Um, and so three quarters again. Fra's father, brother, frere. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's uh, brother, yeah. So three quarters of this baby. And three quarters of a what? Three quarters of an ounce? Of an ounce, so 22 mils. Everything's the same, same amount all the way through. Oh, that's um, useful. <laughs> it's a really easy cocktail to make. And once you know this, you can play around with doing two liqueurs, a citrus, and a, um, and a base spirit. So okay. it's good to experiment with. So we put in our maraschino. It's a really pretty bottle. Um, and it's pretty sweet, but it's pretty funky. It's got like, it, it, it itself has sort of a nutty taste to it. Um, so I'll put this baby like in. Like maraschino cherries, which are very usually sickeningly sweet. Right, and right. But if you buy the neon. maraschino, which, uh, so in, in the pictures, I've garnished this with um, some of those Luxardo maraschino cherries, yeah. um, which looks really pretty, but I don't like them very much. So I haven't included them today in this recipe because I won't eat them. <laughs> I like them because they used to be in Shirley Temples. And when we went to big, big dinners with my grandfather, you know, that we were allowed to have these mock cocktails. We felt right, so right. special. Feel fancy as a little kid, yeah. Feel fancy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just want to show you this color. You can see it in the, in the light. This yeah. is the gin. It's been stained oh, with saffron. It's beautiful. And it's enjant. So we, now we add our gin and that's all our ingredients. And then this is a shaken cocktail. Usually if you have citrus in your cocktails, um, you want to shake it because it really, um, somehow the aeration really uh, spreads around the flavor in a way that stirring doesn't really do. So I'm getting my shaker. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> neighbors will think I'm- get a little aerobic exercise yeah, in. It's true. always good for you. <laughs> yes, doctor, I did my aerobic exercise today. Put your cocktail, um, cocktail guns. Is that a lemon shirt you have on? Well, it's, I think they're Meyer lemons because I thought they were lemons, but they're pretty dark. Yeah. So, so they, they read as both lemons and oranges, but they're pretty lemon shaped. So I'm calling them Meyer lemons. Look, lem kind of, okay, kind of, <laughs> lemon shirt. That's so specific, but it is an heirloom. <laughs> it is an heirloom seed that relatively recently reintroduced to the market. And I did do a taste test. I think I put it on Facebook or Instagram at some point, which are juicier. And the Meyer lemons are so much more flavorful and so much juicier than regular lemons. Yeah, it's very popular in worth. Sonoma County where I live to grow Meyer lemons. All right, it's pretty full, but you can see this pretty drink now. Oh, yes. Oh boy, this is the bad part where he gets to drink some I early know. in the morning because it's <laughs> he's in California, right. we're in New York uh, today. But this is encouragement to go. This is very easy to do, equal parts overnight saffron yeah. very the difficult the only difficult thing is is attaining your malab 
which if you're in New York, you could probably find it at Calustians, the Indian or any sort yes, of no, exotic market place. like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe even Fairway would have it, but I'm going to give this a little taste. Yes, Francine Segan of Shakespeare's mm -hmm. Kitchen. She wrote the cookbook Shakespeare's Kitchen turned me on to Calustians. And I'll just say that it was Nina from Cultural Commons who um, who I wrote up the gin report for. So just to just a hat tip and thank people for their contributions to my my knowledge set, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah. How is it? It's really delicious. Okay. So it's really interesting and really a really balanced cocktail because you get Absolutely. first thing you smell, you get this like really nutty cherry smell with a little bit of saffron in it, which is a really complicated, complex. Talk about complexity. It, equal parts cocktails are a good place to find a little complexity because it's every flavor seems to come through. So I'll give you a taste. Which is interesting because, oh, I love that every part seems to come through when it's equal parts. Mm -hmm. So it's a collaboration cocktail. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely way to mm. celebrate the end of summer, Labor Day, and I yeah. think in Britain it's Bank Holiday Weekend. That's what they yeah. call it, Bank Holiday Weekend. Yeah. And so, um, you know, drink up. And yeah, it's funny because- Your weekend is not a comedy of errors. No, I hope so. But uh, <laughs> it's really, really, it's, it's really an interesting combination because you'd think cherry and, um, and, and hazelnut go together, but you wouldn't think that necessarily goes with saffron and the flavors in gin and lemon, but it really does somehow. Okay. Um, they really, it's, it's sort of like a dance. It's sort of like a beautiful dance, this, this cocktail. Um, and, and after you have a few, you'll feel like dancing. Exactly. So the line of the week is, Am I in earth, in heaven, or in hell? And so hopefully after you have a few sips of the cocktail, you go straight to heaven. Yep. Drew, thank you so much Welcome. for this month's play. <laughs> play, play, oh, we need a good, oh, anyway. Uh, play with your cocktails or something like that. Figure it out. Play yep. on cocktails. Play on, play on play cocktails. On. And um, we will see you next week, possibly, from a um, from a Shakespeare retreat that Drew and I will both be on. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. If we can browse we can ourselves. Do. Okay. Have a great week. Cheers. <laughs>